What's up, mutants? Welcome back. That's either peace or <laughs> piss off, depending on which side of the pond you're on. This is old Shrebo with you from mutantville.com. I thought I'd do another vlog for you this week here on YouTube. This one might run a little long, which means there'll probably be some audio sync problems, but what can you do? These are direct uploads, and they get screwy sometimes. But I was uh, spending the weekend chatting up people on the IMDb horror board, specifically talking about the original Evil Dead, the new Evil Dead, uh, about remakes, about independent filmmakers, responsibility to make original works, you know, just the whole, across the board, getting into everything. And uh, one of the threads that I saw uh, was lamenting the passing of mom and pop's video stores. And uh, I, I totally understand, understood that thread because I was always a big, big fan of those old school mom and pop stores where you could walk the aisles and pick up the cover art, the, the uh, VHS cases or the DVDs, you know, or nowadays you can get DVDs or Blu-rays at the few that are still left around. And um, the cover art had a chance to, to sell you. You could pick it up and look at it and, and, uh, really take in all the detail and look at the back and read over the synopsis and everything and it, it really pulled you in and there was there was something just awe-inspiring about walking the aisles and seeing the various genres laid out you know I would always just go straight towards the science fiction aisle or the fantasy aisle or the horror aisle and even if I couldn't watch the movies, I would look at the covers. So to make a long story short, let's talk about cover art today. This video would probably work better as a direct screen capture, but my program's acting screwy right now, so uh, I'm going to do it as a vlog instead and try to show you some examples from my collection. Now, one thing I realized pretty quickly is that I don't have a lot of great examples of bad cover art in my collection because I usually try to buy the stuff that looks good though my collection is littered with things that I've bought just because I ran across it for 50 cents at a yard sale or at a, um, a flea market or what have you but we just came back from the Mad Monster Party last week um, and uh, one of my signatures was Roger Costell who did the original Empire Strikes Back artwork and I talked to him about how his artwork influenced me and everything so what better time than now to talk about poster art as well as cover art, though, you know, all the examples I'm going to have to use today are, are straight from the cover art, and they're not always the same as the poster art, but in most cases they are. So, I just talked to Roger Castell. Now let's have a crazy Scribo-Rama vlog talking about cover art in only a way that Scribo-Rama can. So I'm going to give you some examples uh, that are good and some examples that are bad. So here you go. Empire Strikes Back right off the bat. Um, some of these um, examples I might have to go through really quickly, in which case feel free to pause the video and take in the glory of the, the picture and the cover art. You know, it, I love this collage approach. I think that's just my favorite approach. It captures moments, uh, significant moments for all the characters. Uh, you know, the ultimate goal for any good cover art is to make you buy a ticket to see it or make you buy a copy. So there are two lines of thought to doing that. There's the Hollywood way, which is stars are going to make you buy a ticket, you know. So in that case, they're going to put big pictures of their stars on there, Will Smith or whoever. And um, people that don't have that star power are going to take advantage of the genre. And one of the great things about the old Star Wars posters is they, they just showed off all the different aspects of the genre. And also you got the stories in there. Like, the sketch is a real intimate moment between the two of them. So you know there's a love story there. You know there's a dark, <laughs> evil dude behind it all. There's a weird little green guy over here. And, of course, down there's the comic relief with C-3PO and R2-D2. So you get that total package and it makes you want to see it. it. Makes you want to know what it's about, juxtaposed against that title, The Empire Strikes Back. So you can see a little bit of that influence in my 
artwork. This cover is actually the final version is one that Brent Bowers did by himself without input from me, but he kind of adapted it from it was one of the A B versions of uh, the festival edition cover that we had worked on. Uh, so you can kind of see the collage element at play. You've got the bigger picture, the bigger figure looming in the background, and you have the love story here. And I never <laughs> realized how close that was to Empire Strikes Back until right now. Um, and then Tales from Mutantville, which is its own thing, which is an obvious homage to Tales from the Crypt. Uh, a specific cover, I think, actually Tales from the Crypt number 46. Uh, it's got after Jack Davis down here at the bottom in recognition of our uh, direct influence. Uh, might not see it so much here in the Tales from the Crypt cover because it's based more on the Tales from the Crypt comic book covers. Because this doesn't have the three little inset panels that usually featured, um, you know, whatever the various stories were in that issue or um, the hosts, the Crypt Keeper and the whatever they all were. There was an old evil witch or something like that. Something along those lines. You can see, uh, see some of that kind of pulp influence. Very grindhouse influence on the recent Hobo with a Shotgun cover. That's straight up 70s grindhouse kind of stuff. And again, you can see that kind of pulp influence. It's got the collage effect approach going on there. Not effect, but the collage approach. Another cool collage and very much a kind of a throwback to 70s and 80s style artwork. Chillerama. Whole lot of detail to kind of make you get up close and personal with it. Show you more 70s era. I believe this is the Ralph McQuarrie version. This is before Castell. I might be mistaken on that. I'll have to look it up for certain. Here I am fudging my own Star Wars trivia. But again, you got the collage effect. The dark figure of Vader looming ominously in the background. The Death Star, you know, the lightsaber. Everything. It's all there. And it's just a classic hero pose. But now we know how creepy that is to have Luke and Leia that close in such an intimate way when they're brother and sister. Naughty, naughty. Now I'm going to try to show you some different genres so you're not just... So you get a good view. It's like Bruce Lee said, if you concentrate too heavenly all what is it it's like, let me get let me start that over. okay it's like a finger pointing to the moon if you concentrate too much on the finger you lose all sight of all that heavenly glory I mean, you have to think about it okay here's neighbors this is a comedy cover okay so you've got the idea it's trying to get across the idea that the zany neighbors are terrorizing old john belushi there you know it's kind of funny if you look at it up close Ackroyd, you know he looks totally goofy there in the window so you've got a little story going on there. Plus you have the star power at play. Now here's one of my favorites. Definite Grindhouse cover. Sorry for the state of this. Again, this is one I probably bought at a flea market, but I love that. Um, there was a version of the poster like this, and it said something about we're 10,000 strong or something along those lines. That was the tagline. But, you know, that gets the point across. That was kind of the point of the movie. Well, one of the points, who knows? That's an awesome movie. That all those gang members were out there. Now, here's one of my favorites for horror. But uh, has an ugly sticker on there. Sorry, I got this at a going out of business movie time food mart in the world. But I remember seeing the, the life-size stand of this in the lobby. And just wondering, like, wow, is there a scene in that movie where... Uh, they encounter a giant Freddy, and he they walk on his claws. I thought that was really cool, but very very cool cover. It kind of combines the the collage aspect with uh, the close up aspect with the theme, the dream theme of the the uh, movie itself. It fits into the rules of that particular movie. If you think you'll get out alive, you must be dreaming. Sorry, I'm sitting here having to look at the, the cover art to make sure it's all in focus. 
Now here's just a classic. Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon. This artwork's almost always used, except on the clamshell, which is just a close-up of Bruce standing in the courtyard. This is the one that has everybody on it. John Saxon, Jim Kelly. Let's go to a more modern one. Bubba Hotep. Now here you start to see that transition where we went from the collage art of Roger Castell and Empire Strikes Back to the modern close-up art. I'm going to get into some reasons for why I see that happening. But uh, this was still a good combination. I mean, Elvis is an iconic figure himself. Bruce, Bruce Campbell is a big draw, you know, so he's obviously the star. You know, it's got a great old style, uh, you know, cliffhanger style font up there. Very cool. And this is very much kind of the adventure poster feel, almost like the Tales from, Tales from the Crypt and the Tales from Mutantville covers with the inset panels, you know, showing characters and subplots. You know, it's all to create intrigue, get it across, gives you some stuff to look at up close. Here's an interesting one. Back to horror again. Fido. Okay, now you might think, well, it's just a zombie in full shot with, with his family standing behind him. But again, you have that juxtaposition, that comedic juxtaposition that we had with Neighbors. Ching -ching. See how that works. We've got the white picket fence in the background. You start thinking, what are the relationships between the two because of the way they're juxtaposed and obviously meant to play off of one another, which is a great little movie, by the way. Now, here's one of my favorite recent covers, The Mist. This is cool. Here, it's got the location. It's got the mist all around, and here you have the agonized reaction of the main character. Very cool. This was a very sweet little Blu-ray. Uh, Zombie Land. Now, it's not so much one of my favorites, but I think it's at least decent. It combines the modern stuck in a close up approach. Um, they're having to go with a group shot because it's an ensemble cast. Though at one time, Woody Harrelson could have carried the whole movie, but but then they show, you know, the they show the, the fairground in the backgrounds back there, you know, and the title is Zombie Land. So it gives you an idea, like, wow, are there zombies running around at some circus somewhere, and I can just go and shoot their heads off with a shotgun? You know, it makes you it makes you think. It brings stories to your mind, and uh, will hopefully make you buy a ticket. Next one, Troll Hunter. Said. To me, this this works because it, it tells you exactly what's in the movie. It's not a lie. This is what you're going to see at some point. So if this draws you in, then this is what you're going to get. And I really dug that about Troll Hunter. I totally enjoyed the crap out of that. I thought that was a great, great approach to uh, the modern found footage genre. Okay, let me give you some more kind of classic good examples, and then we're going to chart the de-evolution from the collage art that I like, the, the, the strong graphic collage art, to basically the close-up, which is where I see modern art is having to go. And I, I believe the reason for this is very, very simple. It's just a change in medium, because the old classic posters and, and cover art were designed to promote theater screenings and obviously designed to promote VHS or DVDs to be played on TV at one's home. So, so two distinct mediums. But today, nowadays, we're in the digital medium, the digital age, and we've added phones. You know, essentially, we'll call it phones, though there's, you know, ever-increasing variety of handheld devices that, that you can watch anything you want on it. So so we're adding this new dimension to what viewers are wanting to experience their movies on. So from the large large screen experience of the theater 
to the medium <laughs> medium screen experience of your your own living room to the intimate up close and personal but very very small okay very small watching it on your phone while you're on the subway or while you're at break on work what have you so because of that people are not able to as easily process the detail of the collage art on the smaller medium that's why getting closer to the close-ups simplifies it it makes it more direct and this direct imagery is supposed to do its best to sell the movie to sell the central idea of the movie or at least the very least you know sell the star okay are you with me I told you this was going to be a crazy one here we go old classic let's talk about psychic space that's one of the principles we want to talk about psychic space it simply means what's dominating the screen in in old school hollywood thinking the biggest star always dominated the most psychic space though so here on this cover actually the robin hood logo and emblem there dominates the most space but errol flynn has, has a fair amount of his own there as robin hood but this is just a nice adventure collage showing you a little bit of everything oh well is that robin hood there again at the bottom so there you go he's got even more psychic space so the, the star he gets it that's fun it's not great or anything but you can see all the elements are there bride of frankenstein i showed you a peek of that just a second ago same thing all the elements are there create intrigue it's got some great atmosphere to it as well king kong catches it catches king kong right in the middle of his action um this is not so much a montage now or a, excuse me a collage not a montage i'm mixing my mediums um as it is more um just a nice long shot of this this action of king kong you know snatching up a girl and people running crazy around him so catches him in the middle of this moment i think this is my personal take on it but I think this this cover art and the poster art kind of reached its peak in the 50s, okay? Because I think by then they had kind of perfected how to make the how to make those really exciting, make them look really good, and it, it continued to rise, maybe hit its peak in the 70s and 80s, okay? It, it, it was a couple peaks, okay? It was 50s. It started to find its identity. It peaked in the 70s and 80s, and in the 90s, it, it crashed down. And I think it started to crash because of the change in the way that uh, movie blockbusters were being created. Uh, and I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place that on Scream, the Scream series. I call this the Scream effect, where in the mid-90s, the horror genre itself was floundering, and Scream helped revive it. They did it by selling the stars and the ensemble cast. It really doesn't tell you much at all about the movie. I mean, you could ch you could change this to, to Sunday in Holland, and it, it would look exactly the same. You know, that's the only this the frightened close up in the background is the only thing that gives you any kind of idea that it might be a horror film or a thriller. You can see it repeated here on screen attack of the faces the close-ups are coming and this is before the mobile the mobile age okay before netflix before everything had to be thumbnail sized okay um once things got smaller and smaller the image the subject the image had to become larger and larger hence the scream effect the close-up okay here's one i showed you earlier this is the that awesome Nightmare on Elm Street 3 cover I showed you on VHS, which I've covered in this stack already. Here it is. So we go from this. You can see that change happening. This is post screen. There's the faces just floating. You have Freddy there in the background. He uh, 
barely has more psychic space than the rest, but you can see his head is slightly bigger <laughs> than, than the other characters. But that just that cannot touch this art. This is real art. This is creating a vision that people want to see. Okay, scream effect on the DVD. I wish I, I had a copy of the original poster, but this is just giant Schwarzenegger face. This could say anything down here. It has nothing at all to do with the story. It's just selling the selling the star. This could say Sunday on Mars or Daddy's new hobby. Anything. Could be anything. Alright. More scream effect. Here you go. Selling the star. Not even giving the genre a chance to sell itself. Judge Dredd, which was a horribly misguided attempt to bring the, the Judge Dredd franchise to cinema. Thankfully we now have Dread, formerly Dread 3D D D if you saw it in the theater. Uh, that actually brings Judge Dread in the world of uh, Mega City One to celluloid life. So here you go, Scream Effect. Big giant star, horror I mean my goodness. And this is actually this is moving towards the uh, the mobile effect, the close-up, even before the mobile age. Here's a horrible one. It's just a boring, boring design. Actually, a very cool movie. Nick Cage is kind of the king of <laughs> becoming the king of bad movies, but definitely the king of bad movie covers, bad movie posters. And this is just so unimaginative. But you can see he's dominating the psychic space there. Um. Here's another one. The new Total Recall. Here, uh, Colin Farrell, he dominates the psychic space. But all the kind of the characters and the elements are just, all just kind of standing around, just looking confused. So it, it, I don't think this one does a very good job of creating a story. There's Nobody's caught in a moment like we saw on the Empire Strikes Back cover between Han and Leia. Now here's one that I, I like a little bit more, the paycheck cover. Though they screw it up with all this too much text up here at the top. <clears throat> but okay, well they have you see the scream effect with the three floating faces, and they're actually all the exact same size. Believe that or not? Wow. Um, but then we I guess we do have uh, Affleck running here down this hallway from exploding ball of fire, the ubiquitous exploding ball of fire, which you'll see on almost every other movie cover nowadays but uh, you know the building around him is turned into it looks like shattered glass which are in fact pieces of a broken puzzle and that brings a little bit of artistry to it wow but you have to look close <laughs> but it still kind of works at the thumbnail size because people they're not gonna go oh wow I lo love the way those puzzle pieces fly through the air they're gonna go oh it's got Ben Affleck in it or oh it's got um Uma Thurman okay here we go the mobile era the mobile effect, the scream effect, simplified, direct imagery, knock up, close up, Seth Rogen, boom. You know, it's, that's that's what their product is. They're selling their star to you. He's the only one in the psychic space. It's nice, button size, thumbnail size, easy to recognize, easy to hit and add to your Netflix queue. Same thing with 40-year-old version. This one I give a little bit more. At least he, he's got a goofy look on his face like the old neighbor's cover. Though, again, stuck in the close-up. Very unimaginative. This one's a little bit better. I'll give it to Will Ferrell here. Anchorman. <laughs> Possibly his greatest movie. I think so, anyway. He's got his pants off. That's always funny. Um, yeah, what I found out was I don't have a great collection of, of bad cover examples because I just I tend not to buy those kinds of movies so I can't hold them up and show them to you um, but I do have a decent number of recent comedies which have some of that bad cover art examples so I can use those here's Tropic Thunder I really don't care for this cover at all it's very unimaginative but it's got our three stars they're pretty much all dominating excuse me dominating equal amounts of the psychic space um, so I guess still are stealing just a little bit more from them. But uh, awesome movie, by the way. 
I guess it's pretty much just being sold on the fact that it's got these three guys in it playing these three zany characters. But I'm not a huge, huge fan of that cover. Another one, Talladega Knights. I'm not a huge fan of this. I think we're, here we're seeing Scream Effect back again, floating, floating heads. This one I like a little bit more. Napoleon Dynamite. It's got some actual real artwork on there. Brings in the, the old collage effect. Combines it with the uh, simplified direct imagery of just Napoleon Dynamite there in the center. It's got little bits of the rest of the movie drawn on the lockers behind him. So it brings some artistry to it. Uh, now here's one of my favorite examples. If you remember earlier, I showed you the Warriors. We had this great, great, great poster cover. They are 10,000 strong. I wish I could remember the, all the tagline. But, and here you go, perfectly simplified. Boom. From that to that to that. I mean, you can, you can see the de-evolution happening right in front of your very eyes. What a horrible, horrible cover for an awesome movie. Okay, and here we go. And then, got Star Wars, and right at the dawn of the DVD age, but before they were DVDs, we had, oops, that's the wrong one, it's going to show you, Empire, now I've lost it in my pile over here, oh well, Simplified Empire, you can even see the DVD, how it's kind of, it still has the montage, the montage, I said it again, still has the collage effect of the earlier design, but it's different. It's less, less emotionally charged. Um, and it looks a little bit more disjointed to me, but maybe that's just me from being used to seeing the original, you know, for so many years. And plus, it's it's taken so much of the uh, the impressionistic feel behind of it, and the, the kind of wash of the lights and whatnot. It's made it more computerized. Well, brought it into the Photoshop era. You know, moving towards that simplified direct imagery, which you definitely saw in the old VHS versions. And there was no excuse for this because this was pre pre digital age. Um, so there, there was no Netflix, so they didn't need this. I mean, that's just laziness. And my, I mean, I can only surmise that they're not wanting to pay the artists or, uh, you know, the owners of the original poster art. Okay, here's where we see a kind of a stabilization reached. Okay, there's my Star Wars one I was trying to show you earlier. Sorry, there's like a pile of movies that I've already knocked over over here, so I'm losing track. There, you can literally see it happening, if I can get them to line up right. You've got Vader in the collage, and then boom, everybody else is taken out. And you just have Vader, X-Wing, and TIE Fighter. And you see the de-evolution happening. Here's kind of a stabilization point, and... DVD, the early age of DVD arrived, and they were still making VHS, and you'd get them both, <laughs> oops, everything turned around right, you'd get them both at the same time. Here, this is not a great cover that I'm in love with, but, you know, you've got a full wide shot of the ensemble cast, uh, you know, Keanu's the biggest star, so he's dominating psychic space, but they're standing in an alley full of bullets. Uh, you know, it has kind of that, that crime noir feel to it. It's very dark. Um, but then it's also got the, the Matrix effect going on behind it. So you're kind of wondering, like, what are, are they teleporting in? You know, but it has a time and a place that they're grounded to. But then up here is where the questions start to come in, literally. So at least here's kind of a stabilization point um, from the transition from the old collages to the modern simple direct image and you see that change boom for the digital age where it becomes even more simplified just taking three of them throwing them in the mix of the matrix 
and you wonder are they teleporting in what's going on and, and you lose just a touch of information and it changes the context so much and I don't think that's a good thing at least not in that example um, okay now here's some of the classic Star Trek poster art again here they're actually using the uh, Hollywood method of the stars because Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock are obviously the biggest star, but then they added the third one because they, they were trying to make her iconic, who's the chick who just become became iconic for being that annoying bald chick in the first Star Trek movie because <laughs> that character never came back, in case you didn't notice. Um, but still, it has a bit of the collage effect, but this worked for kind of creating a kind of iconic, awe-inspiring look for the return of these characters and then here in the artwork for um, Star Trek 2 the Wrath of Khan you have much more of the collage effect at play and you've got Khan looming over Kirk and Spock and McCoy there and you see the Enterprise beneath them and then you see that transition to today Star Trek boom just the actor's face Take off the cover, just the actor's face. Alternate back cover, just the actor's face. It's kind of the iconic, they're going with the iconic imagery of the star, but in this case it's the character and the star. But they're totally, completely foregoing the genre. I mean, this could be a cover for anything. It's the same as the Tropic Thunder cover, you know? And I just don't see that as being a good thing. <laughs> Here's another classic, Deliverance. Again, we've, we've got kind of a, a, a triptych here, uh, two inset panels, and this iconic. Now, there's actually one of the posters is comprised of just this image, just a close-up of the hands and the shotgun rising up out of the water. And so I like that they included that on here because, again, here's the touch of artistry. It adds a bit of, you know, metaphor to it. It adds a bit of thematic resonance. And then you go to the modern Blu-ray, and it's just Burt Reynolds and John Boyd on the cover. You know, devoid of all artistry. Not even on the back cover. So literally, you're seeing that transition. Scream effect. The stars, the Hollywood effect, you're seeing the mobile effect, the image is getting closer, bigger, simpler, more direct. It's classic Disney, Escape to Witch Mountain. There's just a couple of kids, not even terribly imaginative for that time, but you do see the mountain behind them and some kind of structure back there and then you juxtapose that with the title of Escape to Witch Mountain and you start thinking why wow, these kids are in some kind of magical mystical mountain and then you go here and you've got the scream effect of the, the kids faces ripped from the other image just kind of plastered at the top and um, you got the UFO floating in the middle I don't, I don't know about that one it just seems kind of too too crammed together, too disjointed for me, too photoshoppy. Now here's an absolute classic montage. Montage again. Collage cover. You've got, uh, I want to call him Caesar, but what's his name? Cornelius in Planet of the Apes. Um, and of course the iconic shot of the Statue of Liberty juxtaposed against the title Planet of the Apes. That one should even work for the digital age, and this is pre, pre-mobile. And here you see it simplified, boom, to just the eight face. I mean, you again and again, I'm literally showing you the transition, the decline of the artwork, the simplification because they think audiences are morons or something. I don't know. Sometimes it just it just doesn't work, and uh, it's, it's uninteresting. They're uninspired. Like look at this X X Men Two cover. It's just the group. It's an ensemble cast. The scream effect. If Wolverine didn't have his claws out, you'd think they were all going to a club. 
let's just expose that against this Ten Commandments cover. Now this is, I have no, I have to admit, this is probably not the original poster artwork. This is a, this is a modern Blu-ray cover, but I like this cover because it has a lot of things going on. It's got the mobile effect with the simplified direct image of just the main character, but he's caught in a moment that uh, exemplifies everything he is. There he is parting the Red Sea. So. Um, we see that it makes you think, you know, if this kind of thing that catches your interest, you think, wow, I, I want to see that. That's it's got to be awesome, and it really is. So it's, you know, so it's the same principles: one character versus one ensemble group, unposed, posed. One is true to the character; one is nothing. One is unimaginative. I mean, a monkey could have taken a picture. There's another interesting one. We're gonna kind of chart the failure of some of these. Um, Batman. Now this one is, is a good one because they went with iconic image, just the symbol, just oh, here it is. Because they really wanted to break away from the campy Adam West, Burt Ward look and feel of Batman. And at the time, this was thought to be really edgy and, and um, yeah, just edgy and cutting edge. And very dark and gritty, and now you look you look back at it, and it seems kind of campy. Um, but the artwork was nice. The artwork was nice. Um, I should have pulled the other Batman covers from the '90s era, but here on the Dark Knight, they just went with the Joker, and I I don't care for it. I mean, yeah, it's it's the Joker. It's nice full shot of him standing in the city that's in obviously in the midst of chaos but like seriously that's the best they could do I, I really like the ones that uh, had the why so serious Th that was a lot better those were some much much nicer posters would have made much better cover art this to me is just so unimaginative yeah they're trading on the iconic image of the Joker and rebranding him there but couldn't they pose it better couldn't they have done something with it same thing with the alternate cover. Batman on the bat cycle. You barely see Batman. I mean, this is a little head right there. The cycle actually dominates the psychic space. They're using more the technology and the James Bond approach to sell the Batman movie than the actual character or any of the themes that play in it. I think they corrected that a little bit on um, some of the versions of the Dark Knight Rises poster because I like the ones that I don't know what they call that perspective, but it's worm's eye perspective up of the cityscape, and um, at the top where it all comes together, it, it, it forms like the outline of the the Batman bat symbol. So it was very very cool. There's another one that I'm just not impressed with at all. So here you see it all at play. You've got these awesome characters played by awesome actors. You've got the scream effect going on, just a bunch of floating heads, really just a bunch of floating characters that could be doing anything. Um, so unimaginative for such a great movie. And, you know, ultimately, I guess my advice is, yes, we understand the direction the medium is going, okay, and this is going to make this is going to change things across the board, so we have to either keep keep up with it or you get lost. But at the same time, let's hold on to some of the artistry of what made those old covers and posters so great. Okay, so here's an example. I think one of just the simplest ways to do it is, at the very least, if you're going to use simplified direct imagery, capture your character in an iconic moment, in a moment that defines them, or a very strong emotional moment in the story so it creates interest and intrigue and makes your audience want to purchase your movie and or go see it at theater or watch it streaming online or what have you and at the very least juxtapose them against their environment if nothing else so here you go from the horrible artwork of the avengers to this fantastic cover art based on frank quigley artwork from the all-star superman comic book of the same name you've got superman yeah it's the mobile effect simple direct imagery superman by himself but he's juxtaposed against his environment where he is flying on the sun and that's something my friends that only superman can do spider-man is cool batman is awesome he's got a lot of cool toys 
but only Superman can walk on the sun. So, be your artistic filmmaking Superman. Walk on the sun of your imagination. This is Strebo. I hope you've enjoyed this Strebo Rama vlog breaking down the rise and fall and hopefully the eventual resurrection, my friends, of cover and poster art. Thanks for joining me. Remember to check us out at mutantville.com. That's why we do all this stuff. See you next time.